Today, we're designing and making a custom ball maze out of quarter-inch plywood using a Glowforge laser cutter. What's up everyone? If you're new here, I'm Tim Ung, an architect bringing you into my studio and showing you my process of designing and making products and architecture. For this project, we'll be using quarter-inch cherry plywood, clear acrylic, paper masking tape, wood glue, Odie's oil, a quarter-inch ball bearing, machine screws, screwdriver, and a Glowforge laser cutter. To design this project, I'm using a software called Rhinoceros, and I start off by drawing the overall dimension of this project. Since the maximum size of my laser cutter's work area is 19 by 11 inches, I've decided to make this project 18 and 3 quarter inches wide by 10 and 3 quarter inches tall. The rectangle is offset by 3 eighths of an inch around the entire perimeter to provide a thin frame. With the overall dimensions drawn, I move on to designing handles on both sides of the rectangle. I use simple lines and a semicircle to create the overall shape. Then, I draw guides that consist of a circle drawn to meet the inside lines that I offset from the perimeter of the overall rectangle. I offset this circle by 3 quarters of an inch until I reach the outside of the square guide and the inside of the circle. I offset these circles by an eighth of an inch on both sides to give me a thickness of 1 quarter inch. Then I delete the center line. This will create the walls of the maze. Then I draw lines at 20 degrees starting from the center of the circle. These lines will help us identify locations where we can cut openings for the steel ball bearing to roll through the maze. Now, it's time to design the path for the maze. I use the circles and lines to identify areas where I want the ball to reach the end of its path. I start from the center of the circle and work my way towards the corner on the upper left. I make the openings one half inch wide so the steel ball bearing can pass through. With the path designed, it's time to create walls to block off specific areas of the maze. Just like the previous step, I used the lines as guides and created walls that will be one quarter inch wide. I also decided to cut more openings to the other three corners so that the ball could possibly slide into them and make the maze slightly harder. Then, I start setting up the laser cut files by duplicating the design and assigning different colors to the project. The base panel will be engraved with the path of the maze so that I could align the layers and glue them in place. There will be three layers that create the walls of the maze. Then, there will be an acrylic panel that seals the top of the maze so that the ball doesn't fall out. The entire project will be held together with wood glue, and the acrylic panel will be installed with machine screws. To double check my project, I extruded each layer and stacked them to create the 3D model. With the design of this custom ball maze complete, it's time to install paper masking tape onto my cherry plywood to protect it from marks and burns. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's get the material into my Glowforge and start laser cutting each piece.
With the pieces cut, I carefully remove the paper masking from each piece and organize them on my work table. Then, I apply glue to the first layer of the inner area of the maze and glue it into place. I repeat this with all the remaining inner maze pieces. Then, I apply wood glue to the remainder of the pieces and glue them into place. When the wood glue is dry, I place one steel ball bearing into the maze, place the clear acrylic sheet over it, and use the machine screws to hold it in place. Now, the project is complete and ready for use. So that's how I design and make this custom ball maze. Next week, I'll show you how this ball maze can inspire and become architecture. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when the video is out. Let me know what you thought about this project in the comment section below, and remember to support this channel by liking this video and sharing it with a friend. I'll see you again next week.